Are you having a tough time keeping your test sieves in perfect condition? Don't worry, we'll go over all the tips and tricks to maintaining your test sieves. Stick around. Hi, I'm Candice, and test sieves are an incredibly precise and valuable instrument in the field of particle size analysis. With all the fine powders and abrasive materials that can be put into a test sieve, it can be very difficult to find ways to keep your sieve in perfect working order. So how exactly do I maintain my test sieve? W.S. Tyler actually invented the test sieve standards back in 1910, and we've continued to innovate and help customers get the best possible results from their particle size analysis operation. So in this video, we'll go over regular visual inspections, the proper way to sieve, cleaning your test sieves, storing them, and recertifying your test sieves. Regular close visual inspections can be incredibly helpful. This is an easy way to be sure you're checking that your sieves haven't suffered any wear and tear recently, which will alter the analysis results. It's recommended that you do a visual inspection on a schedule that you determine based on your operation's needs. This should be one of the easier things to spot when looking at the sieve. By holding the sieve up to good light, you should be able to see that the mesh is still pulled tightly across the entire surface. If you see spots that look like they're dented, you'll not want to continue to use this sieve in your process. Dents in the sieve can cause the openings in the mesh to stretch out or change size, and this is going to impact the accuracy of your test results. Just like with dents in the mesh, visually inspecting your sieves to see if there's any scratches is also important. Scratches can cause tears or rips in the mesh, and this can alter your sieve analysis. The epoxy is the gray substance that's used to hold the mesh of the sieve onto the frame. You should check the edges of the sieve, where the mesh meets the metal frame, and make sure that there's no cracks in this. If this happens to your sieves, it can allow more particles to go through the mesh than are supposed to, which will again skew your testing results. One of the best ways to keep your sieves in their top condition is to be sure that you're using them correctly. If you're hand sieving your material, adding pressure to the sieve to push the particles through the openings could clog or even damage the mesh. The particles that are slightly too big could become lodged in the openings or even worse, permanently stretch the mesh. Another common mistake is putting too much material in the sieve at once. Doing this could cause blinding, which occurs when the holes in the sieve get clogged up. This stops the particles from free-flowing through the mesh and will skew results. Test sieves should be cleaned after each use to ensure the following sample doesn't become contaminated with previously used materials. To clean your sieve, turn the test sieve over a receiving pan, gently brush the underside of the mesh using a circular motion, and gently tap the sieve frame with the brush handle to remove any particles that may cling to the frame. If the sieve needs further cleaning, a mild cleaning solution can be used, whether it's a mild detergent or a spray. But it's important that you use a brush that is not going to be too hard on the wire mesh. It's very important to purchase a brush that is specifically intended for use with sieve cleaning. Sometimes, with finer mesh test sieves, the small openings prevent particles from being dislodged. If this is the case, an ultrasonic cleaner will most likely get the job done. This machine is designed to use a very distinct vibrating motion as the mesh is submerged in a cleaning solution. The vibrations shake the particles loose without damaging even the finest of mesh. But there are a few cleaning methods that could damage the sieve. Using an oven to dry your test sieves or a dishwasher to clean them can be very harsh on most mesh counts. Air pressure can also prove to be a detriment to cleaning your sieves since the pressure can warp the mesh. Though it may seem possible, attempting to dislodge particles by hand usually ends with the mesh being scratched or dented. Acidic solutions should also be avoided since they can also corrode the mesh. And since woven wire mesh is an incredibly precise and accurately made product, Attempts at repairing the mesh through welding or other means will only damage the mesh's accuracy and integrity more. Test sieves need to be stored in a clean, dry, and controlled environment. In order to keep the sieve in its optimal condition, it cannot be stored in a wet place or in a rapid temperature changing environment. This could damage the sieve, particularly the epoxy. If you're unsure if your test sieve is still in perfect working condition and is meeting your industry standards, then recertifying your test sieve will definitely put you at ease. A test sieve certification is a statement or verification that a sieve meets or exceeds written standards. It's an assurance that a sieve was manufactured and performs to a certain level of performance. If the sieve meets the level of certification required, it passes and is given back to you with a verification of the openings and other technical information. If the sieve does not pass, you'll be informed and can start the process of purchasing new test sieves. 
Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, fill out a contact us form so we can answer your specific questions. Just click the link in the description. And if you'd like to learn more about woven wire mesh or our many products, we have a learning center filled with written and video content to make you an expert. Just click the second link and you'll be that expert in no time. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and ring that bell to keep up with all things WS Tyler. Once again, my name is Candace Blaker and I'll see you around in the next video. Bye for now.